everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and recently I have been reflecting a lot on the techniques that I do when I'm planning a dyeing project versus the techniques I do when I'm leaving no dye behind. And a lot of times when I'm playing with leftovers, I am trying to do something that's quick to set up and some of the colors that I create are really, really magical. And so it makes me curious if I can try to recreate some of these easygoing yet layered and awesome techniques with a little bit more intent. And so that is one of the things that I want to do today. Before we jump into the video, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner, Chelsea. Chelsea, thank you so much for being today's lab partner, and I really hope you're going to enjoy the yarn that I create. If you would like to learn more about how you as a viewer can become a lab partner on an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, get yarn and shout outs uh, from the video, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. I'll have it linked down below. There's a te technique I do when I have leftovers in multiple colors where I have them diluted because I was rinsing out cups and I pour them over yarn in a pan and don't really move it at all for a while but then I move it and we get something really really cool. So that is what I want to evoke today and I don't know if I'm going to use all of these colors but I have some stock solutions in Jacquard True Turquoise, Dharma True Black, Dharma Silver Gray, and Dharma Deep Purple and so I thought that we would play with these. Now let's create my quote leftover dye bath. In this four inch deep catering steam pan, I have 24 cups of water. And let's add two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tablespoons of white vinegar. Uh, this is, I think probably about half a cup equivalent of vinegar. Maybe it's now as though I added a huge splash of vinegar to my pot. And I want to add some pre-soaked yarn. Here I have 300 grams of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Now this might be too much yarn for this type of technique. Um, but with this amount of water in here, uh, you can see that the yarn is really, really floating. And so as we add dye, there's going to be space for it to move around. And that's exactly what we want. My plan is to mix up the dyes, uh, dissolve them in some various volumes of water, and then pour it on. Maybe move it a little bit, but pretty much just pour and then let it sit and sink in. And then eventually move everything a lot more. And I think, I'm debating, I think I'm gonna start cool because a lot of times I might start with a cooled off dye bath and I might not bother heating things up. This is actually pretty cold at the moment, so, hmm. I'm debating heating it a little bit. No, I'm gonna leave it cold uh, because if I'm trying to do something that's a little more uh, reproducible, <laughs> therefore I should try to have the conditions as easy for me to mimic as possible. The dye stocks we are using today are a bit older, so they're not necessarily accurate, um, but only, they're not that old. So here's some silver gray. And let's just say, see, well, let's see how much we have. So we have about 75 milliliters of it, um, plus potentially some more when we rinse this out, um, which actually, why don't I add just some plain water to here and rinse this out a little bit. And so this actually looks fairly pigmented, uh, but we know that it's really not that pigmented, but since it's a gray versus a black, I'm not entirely worried. Okay, this is gonna get really full. <laughs> um, I'm like debating between how much should I measure things 
versus be just really, really random. Um, so I still have, I don't know, 75 milliliters of the gray left. So that wasn't a lot of dye. Um, and then here, I don't know why I'm like worrying too much about reproducibility um, and measuring, but it's, yeah, I'm just curious. So if I do one, we're gonna do three teaspoons. So we have a tablespoon of the purple in here, which this is more than sometimes we have left over, but sometimes I do have the last little bit of a dye stock and wanna use that up. Now this deep purple is looking really brown right now. It does shift, I'm not sure with heat or acid, but it does shift to be a beautiful, more eggplanty purple. Okay, I've got some more water here. Let's grab some of this blue. And add approximately a tablespoon. You know, which actually this is a lot of blue, but so here, here's my, my thought right now, because I'm measuring things and I can even tell that the way I'm pouring, I'm trying to be a little bit random about it, but it still feels very, very planned. So it really is hard to uncouple the two. All right, we have 300 grams of yarn here. So let's go and take this gray and I'm just adding it there. And you can see that it is going to spread from where I've put it, but some of it will strike pretty quickly. Um, and let's do, of course, since I'm doing three, then things are a little more ordered. A little more ordered. That is looking very brown still, even when coming in contact with our acid. So that is interesting. Rebecca, I'm just, I'm playing with leftovers. This is all leftover. So we're gonna add, you know, some over there and some like that, and maybe some down here. And then, okay, this is feeling more, more random-y to me. <laughs> you know, and we might pick it up and put it down. Um, okay, so that's feeling more random. Now, some of this has sat for like a minute or so, um, and I believe some of these colors are probably striking already, but I'm also going to come and just poke it. Just poke it and let some of this move through because I feel like that is part of all of this as well. And you can see, even though I'm moving things, and things are probably moving, things also are staying to an extent um, a little bit because we had the acid in there already. Um, I do want, let's see, I'm gonna bring over, uh, I think about a tablespoon of that gray mixed with water. Okay, and we're just gonna, be more random, there we go, about where I'm putting it. And I still have, clearly there's still intent, um, but I am moving away from some of those lines that I see and I'm softening it up. This is giving me more of that feel that I was going for. So now I'm actually gonna start heating things up. And I am curious how much color. So we definitely have some gray left in here. The color has not all absorbed, but a lot of it is just, you know, it's, it's in various areas. So I think what I'm gonna do Huh, okay, there's, there's two, two ways I could see us proceeding. Currently, I'm gonna heat this up and let all this color set. Then I wanna flip the yarn over and evaluate if I'm satisfied. And if this was a leave no dye behind, I probably would be satisfied at that point. Or if I wanna add some more color. 
so those are the two directions that I could see us going with this but I'm already really excited with what I see and the purple here is turning more purple already uh, so I'm curious yeah it is more blue down there so even though I mean most of the yarn is below the surface things are still staying relatively in their pockets of area and so I think that if I had no acid which is hard for me because my tap water is slightly acidic but I think if I had no acid in here uh, at the beginning and I was adding these colors on and moving it more at the beginning that we might not see various sections but I am actually really really excited uh, and nope I'm like I'm, I'm sitting here wanting to move it more I'm not gonna move it we're gonna sit we're gonna sit on it <laughs> we're gonna sit on it Rebecca so I'll set a timer for 15 minutes and then I'll come back. Well, this is pretty. I really like this. This is really fun. I don't know if everything will have absorbed, but I am going to flip. And upon our flip, I could be satisfied at this point, but I do want to add more dye just because that will give the results I want. And if I was leaving no dye behind and was not happy with the amount of coverage that I saw, and this is something that I could be happy with. I just happen to want to add more color. If I was not happy um, with a leave no dye behind, I could go and grab some dye stocks or some other dye that I had uh, on hand. And so that is always, always a choice. I'm coming in with the rest of our gray dye and now as I'm adding it I am going to move the yarn a bit but I'm trying to add big volumes uh, in here and let it sit. I, I do want it to spread and be able to move through maybe not a, a ton but that is my goal and my plan here. If it was cool, I might let it sit some more again, but I am just helping it through. I don't mind if we have white left behind. That isn't something that I'm concerned about at all. Um, so, yeah, but I really like where this is going. Now, the reason why I'm diluting the dye at each stage is that if I came in with just say 50 milliliters of dye and added it into one spot, it would be way more concentrated there. It would strike faster in that area and we would have, it wouldn't spread as far. The more volume you add, the act of pouring helps it spread, but also uh, it makes it just easier for it to get over more yarn. Now I've just got five milliliters of our turquoise and I am adding it uh, fairly randomly in. Uh, this time, I don't know, I'll move it. Move it a little bit. Let's give it some time. And I'm going to go get some of that purple. Alright, I've got a tablespoon of our purple dye and see how that went from brown to purple in here. I'm really curious to see how the layering is gonna like look on the finished yarn. But we've got some paler gray in there. There's a hint more, I guess. I don't really wanna cover up all the gray, uh, but my it's fun to see how like my plans shift and change as I'm going and just seeing what the colors are doing together. And I really, really like this. I think it might be a little bit blown out on camera, but um, I'm seeing like pastels and medium tones that I think are really, really beautiful. So again, I'm going to wait about 15 minutes and then we will come back. I forgot to set a timer, uh, but I believe that it has been at least 15 minutes. And I also believe that our dye bath is clear and that I can be satisfied with the color. We do have pale grays in here. Um, this is awesome. I love how this turned out and it's really given us that easy going 
uh, feel that I sometimes do with Leave No Die Behind, except I put a lot more thought into it. Uh, I absolutely could go and add more and more color, but I like how this is, and I don't I've been overthinking this whole video and I don't want to overthink this. So, Chelsea, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off the heat and let this cool completely uh, so then we can wash it. The dye bath is now room temperature. So I'm removing our yarn. Ooh, this is so pretty. Now we can go wash it. This is beautiful and fun and has a softness. And so, just like I have been exploring lately, adding dye to my yarn when it is cool with no acid in it yet, um, I think playing with this softness, because a lot of times when I layer and get a watercolor yarn, I use small sections of color. I go for something very patchy and small. Um, because I want lots of variation. And these sections are bigger and it's just still soft and beautiful. And so having more water volume can help with the process as well. Now I'm not seeing any bleeding. I don't really know why there's soap. <laughs> Maybe there was some residual soap uh, here in the container, but I will add some soap just from rinsing off my soap bottle. Okay, I, I do wash using cool or at least very lukewarm tap water. In the winter, the cool water is quite cold. <laughs> so sometimes I might shift just to be comfortable, but yeah, I'm not seeing any bleeding. So I'm gonna rinse out that tiny amount of soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then we'll hang it up to dry so we can come back and see what the finished yarn looks like. This yarn is so pretty and soft, and honestly, I would describe it as watercolor as well. Now, there is something really, really interesting here that I need to explore more. We had a lot of acid present. We had, we started cold, and the big thing was that we didn't use the move the yarn a lot, and some of the way that these colors, like there there's no dye, on the other side there is. We got that shallow application of color that is something that I often really, really want. And so maybe, maybe my glazing attempts of having hot, high acid, adding the yarn in um, dips is great, but it doesn't give me that like shallow layer of color that I've really, really been wanting. And so there's a few things. It could be the dye that I'm using. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I should try this with this deep purple because this effect right here is what I've wanted. And this isn't an effect that I've had from, say, spraying with a Misto spray bottle uh, or some other things. So, and the times that I've had the most glazed appearance in yarn have been from some of these leave no dye behinds when I'm not moving the yarn around very much. So maybe it's a high acid and low movement. Although I suppose that there's some movement when you're pouring liquid in, but maybe you need layers on like that. So I don't know, but this is uh, something that absolutely, absolutely um, could use more exploration. Other than that, there is uh, some consistency between these skeins. I would say that one of them is a bit deeper yeah, but there's lighter and darker patches on all of them. There's definitely like some randomness in here, but I think all of them are really fun. And Chelsea, I really hope you're gonna love it. There's no question that I did a lot of overthinking during this dyeing project. Uh, I wanted to mimic something that I did with leftovers while being a little more in control. And I think that as I'm editing, hopefully editing Rebecca will remember to do this, but then I'll keep track of the 
total amount of each of the colors that I used. Uh, not because I want to replicate this specifically, but just more of a, a curiosity and to uh, understand a little bit more as I'm playing with leftovers what kinds of effects I can get. Because I'm realizing that in the Leave No Die Behinds, not only do I create some of my favorite colorways, but I learn so much because by doing something off the cuff and free flowing, sometimes you see things strike really sharply or spread more. And so I try things that otherwise I might not think to. And this turned out amazing. I only flipped it twice, or I only flipped it once for the dyeing, which a lot of times I'll flip at least four times. And so I think, I don't know, I'm excited to play more with immersion dyeing like this, where it's not low immersion. And adding the dyes more dilute, uh, we could have pumped up the volume here, and we could have used more dye overall to get more saturated colors. But I'm also just really happy and pleased by the light brush of color that we got on some of this. I, I'm just really, really excited. Chelsea, thank you so much for being my lab partner in this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and that you're gonna love your yarn. And again, if you as a viewer want to learn more about how you can become a lab partner for an episode, you get some shout outs in the videos and I will dye yarn based on your fiber and color preferences. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can find more details over in the listing in the Kenneth's Creations Etsy shop. And if the lab partner listings are currently sold out, feel free to message me on Etsy so I can put you on a waiting list for when I release more slots. I do also have something called Last Minute Lab Partner, where you can pick a video that I've already filmed and the yarn have already dyed for me to then film some last minute shout outs for you. And so in there you can see some color hints and a little bit of hints about what the technique is in the video. And so that listing I update all the time as I'm filming new content. So it's also worth checking that out and that link will also be down below in the video description. Really, it's worth checking out my video descriptions. There's always all kinds of handy information, um, plus where you can find me on social media and all of that jazz. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Uh, I release new dyeing videos at least twice a week, sometimes way more frequently through special series and other fun stuff, and you really don't want to miss any of it. I love to play with color and try things that both I'm experienced with and I'm confident in technique-wise, and things when I'm a little more unsure of myself, because I think that seeing me struggle and learn new things can be really, really helpful as you are considering your own yarn dyeing adventure. Or maybe you just like to see how color is applied to yarn and have no interest in dyeing. So I hope that uh, this is some nice slow TV for you. So please subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a comment below to let me know what you would like to see in a future video. Thank you so much for watching.